Chapter 9. The Trinity. G. The Manifestation of the Son of God. First Bible Lesson, Romans chapter 8 verse 16. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit, that we are the children of God. Second Bible Lesson, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 6. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, And let all the angels of God worship him. Golden Text, 1 John chapter 3 verse 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him, as he is. Brethren, that is the theme of our revelation today. God has never lied at any time. Many can lie but God cannot tell lies. Today, you are again revealed publicly to the whole world, that you are the children of God. It is a thing of joy for me, and for you and for the entire mankind. It is so, because what man did not hope, what he thought would be only a matter of dream, has now become manifested openly at its fullness of time. When a child cries, wherever he points his finger, if the father is not there, the mother will be there. During the last advent of our Lord Jesus Christ, when he claimed that he was the Son of God, he was accused of disgracing God. When they went with an intention to kill him, he asked them, For which of the good works do you want to kill me? John chapter 10 verse 32. He pointed to one and said, You were blind, is it, because I restored your sight, that you want to kill me? He said, No. To another he said, You died, and is it, because I have raised you up that you want to kill me? He said, No. He continued to ask them, one by one, and they all said, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. John chapter 10 verse 33. It was there and then that he quoted, Psalms chapter 82 verse 6, For them was it not written in your laws that you are gods, the children of the Most High. The same is the case today. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit, that we are the children of God. God knows that you are his children. That is, why it is said that patience subsumes good conduct. God does not do anything in a state of confusion but brings everything to its manifestation at the fullness of time. But believe and be rest assured that whatever he has said, no matter the time lapse, such a thing would surely be manifested. Our Lord Jesus Christ himself has said these words. That was why he said, I have yet many things to say unto you but you cannot bear them now. Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of Truth, will come, he will reveal everything unto you. John chapter 16 verses 12 and 13. You are true witnesses that this sort of gospel could not have been preached in the past. Even if it was preached, only the corpse of the preacher would be left on the ground. If, because our Lord Jesus Christ said that he was the Son of God, he was killed, how much more would they have reacted, if somebody has attested that all the inhabitants of the world are the children of God? His corpse would not have reached the ground. For claiming that our Lord Jesus Christ was the Christ, all the disciples were beheaded, for they could not see how man could be the Christ. That explains why he warned all of them not to tell any person that he was the Christ until everything was made consummate. There is time for everything under the sun, as arranged by God. And now is the time for the manifestation of the sons of God. As a matter of fact, there is nothing to be hidden again. The cup is full to the brim. There is no doubt and no question about this manifestation. But it is a thing of joy for the children of God to enjoy the manifold blessings of God. It should not be given to any person to doubt or fear, or to have sorrow or weakness. This is, because this generation is the luckiest. Things people have, hither you, not heard, you are hearing them now. And the things which people have never seen, you have seen them now. If somebody had told you that you are a son of God and that you would refer to your fellow human beings as brothers and sisters, you would not have believed. Even though the psalmist, Psalms chapter 82 verse 6, has expressly stated that you are God's children of the Most High, if you were to stake a claim that you are a child of God, you would be stoned to death. That is why you are advised to wait patiently and not murmur, because no matter the circumstances, the will of God must prevail. The main reason for our visitation is to reveal the children of God in its proper perspective throughout the whole world, because our Lord Jesus Christ had not the ability to bring about this manifestation. Even his claim to the sonship of God was unacceptable to the people, how much less for somebody to openly declare that you are the children of God. 
But his teaching has indicated that you should love your enemies, bless them who curse you and pray for those who despitefully use you and prosecute you, that you may be the children of your Father who is in heaven, who makes his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. Matthew chapter 5 verses 44 and 45 which is conclusive that you are truly the children of God. He has also indicated that you should not refer to any person as a teacher, because there is only one teacher, but all of you are brethren. He also instructs that you should not call any person, Father, because you all have but one Father who is in heaven. He also enjoins that you should not call any person Lord, because there is only one Lord even Jesus, the Christ. Matthew chapter 23 verses 8 to 10. These have proved most conclusively that you are the children of God. His disciples went to him and asked him to teach them how to pray even, as John had taught his disciples. Luke chapter 11 verse 1. And he taught them, when they pray to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Who is that Father in heaven? Can you not realize that all those who say the Lord's Prayer are bound by the words of the Lord's Prayer itself, and they have accepted that they are the children of God, the Father, we always pray, our Father who is in heaven, you also pray. Why is it that you deny now, that he is your Father and that you are his children? All church denominations, all prayer houses, and all the inhabitants of the world say the Lord's Prayer, our Father who is in heaven, but today have you not realized that he is our Father who is in heaven? Have you not accepted that you are a child of God? Is it not a clear indication that all inhabitants of the world are brotherhood? Has the Father not borne witness that all of us are children of God? Our hope and faith have now been made manifest at the time we least expected. When our hope is shattered, the Savior appears. So brethren, as of now, death and heads have been condemned, and you, the children of God, have been justified. Brethren, I do not wish to overload you. The first lesson will now be read. First Bible lesson, Romans chapter 8 verse 16. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit, that we are the children of God. Brethren, have you heard that? Even if all the wealth in the world is bestowed unto you, it is not comparable to the manifestation of all the inhabitants of the world as the children of God. That explains why our Lord Jesus Christ said, Howbeit when the Spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you, because all things that the Father has are mine. John chapter 16 verses 13 to 15. Yesterday you always referred to the Son of God in singular, but today, you all are the children of God, brotherhood. You will realize why you can't summon courage to stand publicly and call somebody a brother, wherever you are. You boldly declare yourself as a child of God, and there is no question. During the advent of our Lord Jesus, the Christ, he was the only person regarded as the Son of God. The reason of his crucifixion was because he declared himself to be the Son of God. Matthew chapter 26 verses 63 to 66. This resulted from the indoctrination of the people by Satan that God does not beget any child at all. Even though he owns both heaven and earth, and created man and made everything, he purposely did that to blackmail the Son of God, every person in the world held up to this. And so any person who declared himself the Son of God would be killed. It was not because of raising the dead that he was killed, nor was he killed because of his preaching, nor was he killed because of a particular reason, but it was, because, he being a man, declared himself the Son of God. Even, when they interrogated him, one high priest waited in immediately and inquired from them what other facts they wanted to elucidate from him, because he has already erred by declaring that he was the Son of God, and for that reason alone he should be killed. You will realize that the work done by God at this end of time is really tremendous. The joy that is in heaven, and the peace which prevails on earth can better be imagined than described. The sadness that beset Satan and Lucifer and his followers cannot be described. All of you are aware of what Satan and his followers have done in the world at this end of time. In broad daylight they go about calumniating that brotherhood sucks blood, that brotherhood is apparition, and juju, and mermaid and is cannibalistic. They roam the whole world with their propagandist syndrome. They also maintain that brotherhood relates to the false prophets which the Bible mentions, and that it is brotherhood which has come to lead men astray. 
Compare these calumnious and blasphemous utterances with the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ vis-a-vis -vis what is now transpiring in the world. This explains why it is said that when the battle is tough, the kid must himself lead the army. Often when something happens, we erroneously argue that if God were in existence, such a thing would not have happened. God is very much in existence. Sometimes we question why he has not done a particular thing. I would advise you to rest on your oars and ponder over it. That state of affairs induced John the Baptist, while he was in prison, to send two of his disciples to ask our Lord Jesus Christ saying, Art thou he who should come, or look we for another? Matthew chapter 11 verses 2 and 3. Why did he send his disciples? It was because all his hope was on the Christ. That when he would come, he would liberate the oppressed, he would heal the brokenhearted, he would preach deliverance to the captives and would set at liberty those who were bruised, and he thought that since he was cast into prison, that our Lord Jesus Christ would definitely come to set him at liberty. But to his greatest amazement, John waited in prison but did not hear any person asking him to set out of the prison yard, and so he sent two of his disciples to ask the young man whether he was the one who was to come, or should they look for another. But our Lord Jesus Christ responded immediately, Go your way and tell John what things you have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and to the poor the gospel is preached. Can you observe how a statement such as the one made by our Lord Jesus Christ was capable of causing a great deal of debilitation in the heart of a great many people about the glory of the Christ? Come to think about the whole of Israel, because the Israelites thought that when he would come, he would emancipate and deliver them from the scourges of Roman domination, and remove them, Sinai, from their tentacles and oppression, and kill the Roman Empire with its oppressions, giving them their full independence and self-determination, as they thought he would appear with battalions of soldiers. But to their greatest amazement, he came to preach to people saying, Love your enemies, bless them who curse you, do good to them who hate you, and pray for them who despitefully use you and persecute you. Matthew chapter 5 verse 44. At the same time, they were still suffering under the Roman domination and so they concluded that such a person could not be the Messiah. So brethren, nothing would have caused the Israelites to believe in him, because he did not show them any sign. They were after signs, liberation and freedom, but since such could not be seen in him, they all conspired that he should be beaten up and killed. If it were possible for him to have raised an army and sent at least one battalion which would have dealt a great blow on some of the Roman citizens and destroyed a part of the Roman Empire to liberate them, so that they gained their independence, it would have been possible for the people to give him the benefit of doubt and to take cognizance of his messiahship. But the fact that he, instead, enunciated that they should love their enemies and neighbors, nothing would have convinced them to believe in him as the Messiah. This explains why it is said that flesh and blood will not inherit this kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 50. So brethren, the second lesson will now be read. Second Bible lesson, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 6. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, And let all the angels of God worship him. Brethren, have you heard a very wonderful statement? This, of course, is his second assignment. You are aware that, in his first advent, when he executed his assignment, Peter took up the sword and cut off the ear of one of the servants of the high priest. He rebuked him, and said, Put your sword into its place, for whosoever takes up the sword must surely perish with the sword. Do you think that I cannot now pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels, but how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled, that thus it must be? Matthew chapter 26 verses 51 to 54 slash John chapter 18 verses 10 and 11. Do you think that, if at his last advent, it was commanded that all angels should bow down and worship him, he would have been killed? This is the point which has eluded the people of the world who argue that even the Lord Jesus Christ was killed, and so, since this one cannot be killed, it should not be linked with God, for it is not God, but they operate under the disguisement of God. You have heard the testimony given recently by Professor Bassi Bassi, how they met in a secret meeting and conspired that he should be killed, and mandated their henchmen to kill, but all of them stood tongue-tied and confounded. Brethren, if there is a man to whom God commands that all angels should worship him, you would realize that everything stands consummated. 
that situation is unquestionable. He causes anything to be done without any problem, and without question. He has the boldness and courage to do anything whatsoever, because everything remains under his subjection. He is not mindful of time or day, does not ask any question neither does he have an opponent, and everything is subjected under his feet. There is therefore, no hindrance, and he has the capability of doing everything whatsoever. If you do not understand what is referred to as the angels of God, I am now going to name the lesser ones, for you. Heaven is the throne of God. Earth is his footstool. Therefore fire, wind, snakes in the field, animals in the bush, all trees, fishes in water, birds in the air, all creeping things, and winged animals are angels of God. Thunder, the wind, rain and many other things are the angels of God. Again Lucifer, death, heads, ocean are all messengers. Furthermore, sickness of all kinds, lusts and human desires, wretchedness, poverty, sleep, all are his angels. What do you think of this man to whom all angels of God will be commanded to worship? You have heard one necromancer confessing that he went and plucked some leaves for his preparation of concoction, and the leaves warned him not to pluck them again, because they are brotherhood. He also went to dig up certain roots but the roots also warned him not to dig them up again, because they are all brotherhood. If you want to prove the sacrosanctity or otherwise of this assertion, from tomorrow go to the house of the necromancer regarded as the most powerful. Inform him that you want certain preparations of concoction and diabology to be compounded, for you. He will ask you to whom are you preparing the charm for or against. You tell him you want the charm in order to kill a certain brotherhood member. Even if you tell him that you are a brotherhood, he will drive you away from his compound, and will quarrel with you, thereafter he will raise an alarm and will invite the police, for you that you have rendered his diabology ineffective. He will ask, if you have ever heard, that any person can kill a brotherhood member. To dispose of a preliminary matter, immediately you enter the house of the necromancer, his diabologies, his preparations are rendered useless. That explains, why you are refused entry into certain communities by the citizens, because they know, and have been told, that the moment you parade the community with a sob, all their preparations of concoction and juju and charms will be destroyed. This also explains why, if you are sitting with a group of persons, the moment they know, that you are a brotherhood, they will all desert you for fear, that, if they stay longer with you, the little charms they have will be rendered ineffective. That is why no matter how you explain that there is nothing in brotherhood, they will tell you to go away that you operate under the guise of God. Do you think that it was that difficult for our Lord Jesus Christ to have made the declaration? But he could not have declared that. Who are you to have made such a declaration? The consequence which would follow would be such that your blood will not touch the ground. Do you think that such declaration, as, Alambro Lambro who is God, that you make at the marketplace today, any other living person could make it without his blood touching the ground? Much more is entering somebody's house and singing whatever flies and whatever crawls, Alambro Lambro who reigns. You enter the government circles and announce to the officials that it is Alambro Lambro who owns all the positions that they occupy, and such house owners and government officials will not fail to cast you into paywall. And again, while you are paddling in a canoe, there is a big storm and you call upon the name, Alambro Lambro Du, and the wind subsides, while the storm remains still, they would appreciate what would happen. The whole world, the inhabitants on land and in water, wage a relentless battle but cannot succeed. What then do you think this power is? It is said that, when he will bring back his final begotten into the world, he will command that all the angels of God, all winged animals, all creeping things, all the created and uncreated things should bow down and worship him. You are a child of God, but in this particular case, he has spotlighted in the new dispensation, when he will bring in his first begotten into the world. He has definitely made a distinction between his first begotten and the children of God. Are you that first begotten, so that tomorrow you will become infatuated with pride that you are the first begotten? You are not. It is a truism that you are a child of God, but are you the first begotten of God? This statement has been bestowed on him, who is the first begotten, and it includes everything on earth, link animals, creeping things and other creations. Therefore, these creations together with trees and angels, must subject themselves unto him. There is however no doubt that you all are the children of God. 
He has come to rule and to judge, to write, to recreate and to regenerate everything, and nothing can rear its ugly head or flap its wings. He has come to change and reform, to lead, and to teach. He has neither opponents nor deputy nor assistant. He is the monarch of all he surveys, the be-all and the end-all, and not even angels can flap their wings. All the troubles we have in the world are brought about by the lesser angels. If you want to turn left, death will deal a blow on you, and the head spatters you on the head, while sickness breaks on your limbs. Sleep, which is not exempted will knock you down on the ground, and hunger will also exact its demand on you. But now it is commanded that all these angels should bow down and worship the only begotten of the Father. A local adage has it that the tortoise is willing to dance but its stiff back could not allow it. The angels who were mandated to carry out this assignment, were they allowed to work by prostitutes? The prophets were also sent, did women allow them undertake their assignments? This is the whole confusion which plagues the work of God, because, when the prophets see these prostitutes and women, with long necks and pretty faces, they will jump onto them and fall off from the expectation of God. But now it is said, specially, when he will bring back the first begotten of God into the world, he will decree that all the angels and all the creations of God should worship him. It is meet that man should fear the situation, and to ask what sort of situation it is and from where it has come. God has never done any of his things haphazardly. He brings everything to its ultimate conclusion which remains unquestionable. In a family, if the wife suggests a certain method of doing a particular thing, the husband will disagree with her and suggest another method. There will be a sharp disagreement and the wife will vow that the husband's method will never be used. If the husband's method is used, the wife will cause confusion. You can remember what happened when God ordered that all angels should worship our Lord Jesus Christ, but Lucifer challenged God on why he should worship Jesus. He was exasperated and promised that the name of God would not be heard any longer. Lucifer decided to go his own way. From that time, people started disobeying God. Satan has indoctrinated the whole world, and there is no place in the world where he has not established his own kingdom. He tells lies against all those who serve God, and as a result they are killed. Whosoever attempts to serve God would be killed because of his false propaganda and allegations. It was through these false allegations that our Lord Jesus the Christ was killed. Satan foments all the confusion in the world. No person ever recognizes the existence of God. Scientists have even argued that God does not exist. Even at that time, when the world was not as large as it is today, people neither believed in our Lord Jesus Christ, nor the prophets, nor in the words of God. How much less, now that the world is expanding in leaps and bounds. But what happens today? Has the whole world not attested to the fact that the Most High has come to dwell on earth with man? Behold, here is a sister from Russia with us. She testified that on the morning, before she came, as she was sleeping, somebody knocked on the door, calling on her. She woke up suddenly because of the impact the call had on her, and now she is convinced beyond any reasonable doubt that she has seen God face to face. All doubting Thomases, the infidels, the unbelievers, the atheists, juju, diabology, preparations of concoction, witchcraft, apparition, mermaids, human beings, the wind, the thunder, the sun and moon, all have accepted that the Most High is now on Earth. I have told you several times that neither I nor you are the doer of the work nor any other person, but it is the fullness of time. Right now the only question people have is, when this phenomenon started, and there is no answer to it. Satan lied that God has no children, but now the children of God have multiplied in the world. That is, why I say that this generation is the luckiest of all. The golden text will now be read. Golden text, 1 John chapter 3 verse 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him, as he is. Brethren, is that statement not fulfilled today? Have you not seen him? Have you not been revealed? Hither do, did you realize that you were a child of God? Hither do, did you realize that all the inhabitants of the world were the children of God? But have you not been praying that until our Lord Jesus, the Christ, descends from the sky? A great many people still imagine that it is not until the Virgin Mary comes back to the world and be conceived by the Holy Ghost, before God begets a son. But behold, today, you are revealed as the children of God. 
This is indicative of the fact that there is no word of God that touches down on the ground which does not create an impact. It is not today alone that you are a child of God, neither were you a child of God only yesterday, but of initial, you have always been the children of God. But it was only the machination of the evil one, the great liar, which was responsible for your non-manifestation. But today, you have been manifested in your entirety, the God of possibility. God is the God of mercy and of patience, and of love, and of grace, and of peace and of invincibility, and with whom there is no impossibility. He is God of possibility not of impossibility. What you lack, he possesses. If you have no life, he has life, and he is life. If you are without good health, he is good health. If you have no peace, he is peace. If you do not exist, he is ever existing. This explains why our Lord Jesus Christ says come unto me all those who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. How can God argue that he will never go to a certain place because diabolical things are buried there? Or that he does not want to see the other man because he is a thief? or, because he is a fornicator, which God can afford to do that. But just come in, and he will change you. He is capable of reforming every person, and arranges everything in its ship-shape order, and there are no problems. His love is sufficient unto all generations of mankind. His mercy overwhelms the heavens and the earth. His peace is perfected and flows like honey in all parts of the world. His truth endures forever. Why then do we bother ourselves, while there exists no problem? Whatever he shuts, no person can open, and what he opens no person can shut. Isaiah chapter 22 verse 22. Since he, in the heaven of heavens, has declared that all the inhabitants of the world are his children, that statement is a finality and is incontestable and therefore, consummated. Since he, himself, has said, I will be merciful to your unrighteousness, and your sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 12. This has also been consummated. Because he is the God of ability and of power to bring into existence that which had never existed. The doubting Thomases should no longer doubt, because he has said, I will change you within a twinkling of an eye. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 52. He has reformed all the inhabitants of the world unto himself. He has made everything anew, and Lucifer has returned with sorrow. You have heard that Lucifer was given a very little opportunity within a short spell of time for him to do anything he likes. Right now, the father has assumed his reign and has raised his victorious head. You must be pleased that a Russian has now accepted the deity of our Lord Jesus Christ. Are you not petrified to notice how members of all other religions in the world, this, Muslim, Buddhism, Judaism, which hitherto did not accept the Christ, have now accepted him, and also believe in God? Are you not surprised that necromancers, magicians, spiritualists, seers, soothsayers, hypnotists, mesmerizers, occultists and members of the secret societies who depend on their diabology to earn their living, are destroying their idols and diabolical artifacts, because only one God exists. It is fulfilled in the statement made by God that, this is the new covenant that I will enter into with the house of Israel after those days, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Hebrews chapter 8 verses 10 to 12. It is not, because we are righteous, nor because we seek after him, but because of his promise, that this generation will not pass away until everything is made consummate point it is consummated this day. There is no division again in the world, whether you are black or white or colored, whether you are human or a tree or fish or angels, you are all one. There is no more chance, for you to steal, or to kill, or to oppress, or to indulge in diabology, or to commit any act of sin or to discriminate or to segregate. That period has now been waived by God. Right now all human beings in heaven and on earth are but one. Only one God rules over the heavens and earth, and there is one Lord, one teacher, and one spirit rules in heaven and on earth. You all are clean and sanctified excepting one person who will never be discharged. Who is that one person? He is Lucifer. Whatever you do, you do not do it out of your own volition but Lucifer is responsible. 
He establishes all the church denominations including the Orthodox churches, which preach that God helps those who help themselves. Whatever establishments and organizations that are found in the world are founded by him, as well as prayer houses and spiritual churches, to be used as a means of causing confusion in the world. A shameless phenomenon now calumniating is that Alambro Lambro is dead, and that there is nothing behind brotherhood, but that the power is not from God. If the power does not derive from God, is it derived from him, Lucifer? Lucifer has invited our Lord Jesus Christ to kill Alambro Lambro has the Christ killed him? Why can he himself not come to kill Oobu? You really know what happened? It is no longer a secret. The whole world is conspiring to write defamatory statements and bear false witness against Alambro Lambrobu and then circulate them in all universities. But where is the Lucifer now? Has Brotherhood made any statement in retorting or defending? If in a house somebody consults an oracle which names the husband a wizard, the wife will pack from the house, and nothing will induce her to marry him, unless he vindicates himself by swearing to an oath that he is not a wizard. Even if the husband takes an oath, she will not live in the house. You are true witness to the fact that, if a man is alleged in a community to be a murderer, until doomsday, all the citizens will never be free with the man. He will be kept at arm's length. How much more in this particular case? All the inhabitants of the world calumniate about one person, alleging that he is a murderer, a cannibal, a Dracula, and yet no person is deterred by such allegations, and that alone serves as the most significant testimony, to indicate to you he is the god of possibility and not that of impossibility. Observe now the glad tidings of great joy brought to you that you all are the children of God, children of the Most High, and Satan returns with sorrow. I have no problem with you, whether you are white or black, because you are the children of God. My problem is with him, Satan, that man who is now in the bottomless pit, while the Most High is pacing majestically in the world. Our Lord Jesus Christ had stated that you are clean, except one man alone. John chapter 17 verse 12. He also says that all of you are saved but that man will never be saved. Brethren, there is no doubt, there is no fear to be called a child of God. You are neither worthy nor righteous. But since, ab initio, you have been the son of Adam, and the son of Adam is invariably the son of God, you are all children of God. You were created neither by wood nor by stone, nor by any other thing but by God, because you are the children of God, and the children of God must resemble their father. That you are the children of God, since you were taught the virtue of love and truth good manners, humility, peace and all other virtues, because a good child must of absolute necessity resemble the father and you are now being reschooled. Of what use is medicine or preparation of concoction to you, when you are powerful? When you say let everything runs away from you. You are never sick, you are rich, and when you knock your head, you receive the manifold blessings of God. Why should you worry yourself over any situation? Your father is never sick, is not lacking. He does not commit any act of sin, and is never beset with any evil. Why then should you worry yourself? That is, why it is said whoever regards himself, as wise should become foolish that he may be wise in this school of love. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. Become like unto small babies, because you are now being regenerated and recreated. The inhabitants of the whole world are all prodigal sons, because they have asked their fathers to give them the share of their inheritance, and wasted all the substance with riotous living, worshipping trees and idols, and that is, why they are told to return to the house. Oh! Wanderers, your father is waiting, for you. Whenever you repent, the father will give you new clothes and new shoes and rings. Who can bestow eternal life apart from God? Who can forgive any man his trespasses apart from God? who can bestow peace, and power, and the position of sonship apart from God. We should, therefore, be grateful to the Father who is greater than any other Father. The Father who created heaven and earth, and all the inhabitants of the world. This is the time for his glorification. There is no child of perdition throughout the world. Brethren, it is said that one stroke of the king is sufficient to the wise. I do not wish to be tedious unto you. Those who have ears, let them hear. May God bless his holy words. Amen. Thank you Father, 